Have you ever wondered why your worm bin composting doesn't yield the expected results? Worm bin composting is a sustainable practice that transforms kitchen scraps into nutrient-rich soil. Yet, it's not always as simple as it seems. Gardeners across the globe often face a variety of challenges that hinder the process. From overfeeding the worms to struggling with incorrect moisture levels, these obstacles can be quite a puzzle. But worry not, because every puzzle has a solution. Stay tuned as we explore the top 5 worm bin composting challenges and how to solve them. The first hurdle in worm bin composting is overfeeding. Overfeeding is akin to a buffet that never ends and while that might sound appealing to us for our worm friends, it's a different story. It's like a never-ending Thanksgiving dinner, and we all know how we feel after that third serving of pumpkin pie. So, what are the signs of overfeeding in a worm bin? Well, you might notice a foul smell emanating from your bin, similar to a garbage can that's been left in the sun too long. This is because the excess food is decaying and not being consumed by the worms. You might also notice an increase in pests. Fruit flies and ants can't resist a free meal and they'll be drawn to the rotting food in your bin like a moth to a flame. Now overfeeding doesn't just create an unpleasant odor or a pest problem, it can also have a detrimental effect on the composting process and the worms themselves. Too much food can cause the bin to heat up, creating an inhospitable environment for the worms. It can also lead to a buildup of harmful gases and acidic conditions, which can be harmful or even fatal to your worm population. So what can we do to prevent or solve overfeeding in our worm bins? It's simple really. Moderation is key. Start by feeding your worms a small amount of food. If you notice that the food is gone within a day or so, you can gradually increase the quantity. But if there's still food left after a couple of days, it's a sign that you may be giving them too much. Another tip is to keep a diverse diet for your worms. Just like us, they enjoy a balanced meal. Mix in different types of organic materials like vegetable peels, coffee grounds, and shredded paper. This not only provides a balanced diet but also helps with the composting process. Finally, if you find yourself with excess kitchen scraps, consider starting another worm bin or compost pile. This way, you're not overburdening one bin and you're creating more nutrient-rich compost for your garden. Remember, moderation is key when feeding your composting worms. With a little attention and care you can ensure that your worm bin thrives, providing you with a steady supply of rich, fertile compost for your garden. The second challenge to conquer is managing the moisture levels in your worm bin. This is a critical aspect of worm bin composting that can significantly impact the health and productivity of your worms. Just like us, worms are mostly water, up to 90% in fact. They breathe through their skin, which needs to be moist to allow the passage of oxygen. Hence, maintaining the right moisture levels is of utmost importance. Too dry, and the worms can't breathe properly. Too wet and the bin becomes waterlogged creating a suffocating environment for our wiggly friends. Unsuitable moisture levels can lead to other problems as well. A worm bin that's too dry may not decompose organic material effectively, slowing down the composting process. On the other hand, a bin that's too wet can become a breeding ground for unwanted pests and emit a foul smell. So how do we strike the perfect balance? The answer lies in regular monitoring and adjustment. Aim for the consistency of a well-wrung-out sponge. It should be damp, but not dripping. You can add dry bedding materials like shredded newspapers to absorb excess moisture, or spritz some water if the bin is too dry. It's also a good idea to have a drainage system in place to prevent water buildup. This could be as simple as drilling a few holes at the bottom of your bin, and placing a tray underneath to collect the liquid which by the way makes an excellent natural fertilizer for your plants. Remember, consistency is key. Regular checks and adjustments are essential to maintain the optimal moisture balance. It may seem a bit daunting at first, but give it some time. You'll soon get a feel for it and become a pro at managing the moisture levels in your worm bin. Striking a balance in moisture levels will ensure a thriving worm bin. Our third challenge is ensuring your worm bin has sufficient airflow. Air, my friends, is not just for us humans, it's a vital component for our wiggly friends in the worm bin too. It's all about balance, you see. Balance in nature, balance in life, and balance in our worm bin. Now what does air do in our worm bin composting process? It plays a key role in breaking down organic matter. Oxygen is needed by the microorganisms that help decompose the organic waste. Without air, decomposition takes a different route leading to an anaerobic process that can result in foul odors and less effective composting. Insufficient airflow can create a host of problems. Your worm bin may start to smell, 
indicating the presence of harmful gases. The composting process may slow down or even stop. The worms may try to escape the bin and in the worst case scenario they may die. So how do we ensure there is enough air in our worm bin? Well, there are a few simple steps you can take. First, avoid overfilling your bin. Remember, less is more. It's better to have a half-full bin with good airflow than a jam-packed one with no room to breathe. Second, regularly turn or stir your compost. This helps to introduce oxygen and prevents compaction. You can use a garden fork or even just your hands. Make it a weekly routine, like a Sunday morning exercise. Third, consider the design of your bin. Does it have enough ventilation holes? If not, you might want to add some. But remember, don't go overboard. Too many holes can lead to moisture loss. Lastly, be mindful of what you're adding to your bin. Bulky materials like straw or shredded paper can help create air pockets and improve airflow. In conclusion, good airflow is not just about the comfort of your worms, it's about the overall health and efficiency of your worm bin composting system. Remember, good airflow is crucial for a healthy worm bin composting process. The fourth challenge is to maintain a balanced pH level in your worm bin. You see, the pH level in your worm bin composting system is much more than just a number. It's the balance beam that your composting worms walk on. Too acidic, and your worms will be uncomfortable. Too alkaline, and you'll have the same problem. The harmonious sweet spot lies somewhere in the neutral zone, around a pH of 7. So why is this balance so crucial? Well, an unbalanced pH level can lead to a number of troublesome issues. If your compost becomes too acidic, it can burn your worms, causing them to try and escape from the bin. On the flip side, an overly alkaline environment can inhibit microbial activity, slowing down the composting process. Now, you might be wondering, how can you keep a balanced pH level? Well, the answer lies in what you feed your worms and how you manage your bin. Firstly, avoid feeding your worms acidic food scraps like citrus fruits and onions. These can quickly tip the balance and make your bin too acidic. Instead, opt for neutral or slightly alkaline food scraps like vegetables, coffee grounds, and crushed eggshells. Secondly, consider the bedding. Bedding materials like shredded newspaper or cardboard can help buffer the pH and keep it in the neutral range. Lastly, keep an eye on moisture levels. A bin that's too wet can become acidic quickly. So, ensure your bin has adequate drainage and isn't too damp. You can also use a simple pH test kit to monitor the pH levels in your bin. If the pH is off balance, you can add garden lime or crushed eggshells to raise the pH, or peat moss to lower it. Remember, it's all about balance. Your worms are not just composting machines, they're living creatures who need a comfortable home to do their job effectively. Keeping a balanced pH level is key to successful worm bin composting. Our final challenge is temperature control in your worm bin. Finding the Goldilocks zone for your wiggly friends is essential. Too cold, and the worms slow down, hindering the composting process. Too hot, and you risk harming or even killing the worms. The ideal temperature for most composting worms is between 50 and 80 degrees Fahrenheit. That's a range that typically falls within the comfort zone of most climates, but there can still be extremes. If you're dealing with colder temperatures, consider moving your bin to a warmer location, like a garage or basement. You can also insulate the bin with materials like straw or old blankets. On the other hand, if high temperatures are the problem, shade is your best friend. Move the bin to a shaded area or cover it with a light-colored cloth to reflect the sun's heat. Remember, temperature control is about more than just the comfort of your worms. The right temperature also affects the speed and efficiency of the composting process. So, keep a keen eye on your thermometer, make adjustments as needed, and your worms will thank you for it. Maintaining the right temperature is essential in worm bin composting. And there you have it, the top 5 worm bin composting challenges, and how to solve them. From overfeeding to temperature control, we've covered them all. Now, you're equipped with the knowledge to tackle these issues head-on. With these solutions in hand, you are now ready to overcome these challenges and